What up, it's your girl, Minna, and welcome back to my channel. I'm so glad that you're back. In this video, we are talking about all the things to avoid when you go to a makeup artist. Now, obviously, if you've already gone to the artist, you're already there, you're already in his or her chair. But with that being said, there are things that you need to pay attention to. Even if you go to a counter or you're at someone's actual house, a freelance artist's house, whatever the case may be, you're in a wedding party, you're a bridesmaid, whatever it is, these are things that you need to know as a consumer. And if the makeup artist is doing these things, then you need to run. But if you're a bridesmaid in a wedding, I guess you have no choice. You need to say something or walk away because it is not okay. What gives me license to even say this? Well, I was a freelance makeup artist. I worked on my own and I also worked at Mac. So when I was on my own, there are things that I was doing that I didn't realize were bad until I worked at Mac, okay? So I learned the hard way, but I want you to know because these days there are so many content creators, influencers who know how to do makeup who aren't trained and I'm not calling anybody out in particular I'm just saying as a consumer you should know what is okay and what is not okay so let's get into the video if you're excited I want you to subscribe and comment and let's get to it one of the things you want to be careful about is if your makeup artist does not wash their hands your hands need to be clean before you touch someone's face so for you as a consumer if he or she didn't wash his or her hands before they began your face or at least put hand sanitizer on on, that is a problem okay even if you go to a counter they have hand sanitizer they should be using it you should be looking to see that they do this if they don't you need to say something or walk away you need to walk away think about it she here she could have just went to the restroom picked their nose just anything touch the mouse touch the keys touch the doorknob here's the key this is your face if you're paying for the service this is your money you need to say something you can be polite no need to be nasty but you need to be looking out for this your makeup artist needs to have healthy sanitary practices. Now, along these same lines, is she double dipping? If she has a lip gloss that she's putting on you, I'm just gonna say she, cause whatever. If she has a lip gloss that she's putting on you, right? Okay, and she takes it out of the tube, what I used to do is I would, if I had glosses, I would pull these felt tips out. You can pull the felt tips out of the, the sticks. So you don't accidentally take the gloss that's in your kit and then apply it to your client and put it back into your kit. Do you understand what you've done? You've contaminated this gloss. And then when your next client comes in and use it again, that's disgusting. You've double dipped. That is wretched, okay? So if your makeup artist takes out a gloss or a lip stain and this felt tip is not off, keep your eyes wide open because what they should do is perhaps take some of the product, put it onto a clean plate. This plate right here, clean it with alcohol, perhaps put the product onto it, take a clean lip brush and then apply that gloss or lip stain or whatever to your lip. That's the proper way to do it. Otherwise, if they make a mistake, they're going too fast, I've been there and the felt tip is still on here and they put it on you, that is your gloss. That is your lip stain. That is your product because now your bacteria is on the product, okay? They cannot and should not use that on someone else. It is now yours to have. Keep your eyes wide open. If, if, this, if this happens, it's a problem. I'm just telling you, it's not safe. It's not okay. It should not be happening. That artist should not be double dipping and you need to say something that is not sanitary. If they happen to take the product and put it on the back of their hand, people do that often. I started to do that after a while, like not in the beginning because at Mac, like you had to be completely completely sanitary. So if they do that, I, if, when I used to do that at home, I would make sure that I, I sprayed alcohol, 99% alcohol on the back of my hand, cleaned it. And then if I wanted to use back of my hand, it was clean, okay? Very, very important. But honestly and truly, the best way to go about it is to just be as sanitary as possible. Your artist should be using a clean tray, mirror, something that they've cleaned with, with alcohol. And they should have an alcohol bottle or spray bottle nearby. They need to continuously be cleaning things. If they're gonna use a lipstick on you, first of all, let me just tell you this right now if you are in the mall or at a department store and you pass by a counter and you want to try on a lippy you need to make sure that you get a rep to clean off that lippy do not just put it onto your lip that is disgusting there's bacteria on that you need to have the person take up a spray bottle of alcohol they have it at the counters okay and they need to spray the lippy with alcohol and then they will take a tissue a kleenex whatever and wipe off the lipstick and then give it to you. You have to be asking for this. They should be doing it, but if not, you need to be asking for this. If you're going to a counter, I'm, I digress, but we're already here. If you go to a counter, you wanna try a lip gloss, 
don't <laughs> because you don't know if someone put it on their lips and walked away if we're talking about lippies a lip is more safe but it needs to be sprayed with alcohol wiped off and then given to you if you're trying on a lip pencil or if you're if your artist is using a lip pencil so that she needs to spray it with alcohol sharpen it clean out her pencil sharpener wipe it again and you need to know this so you can look out for it if she or he ain't doing it you are in danger of getting some kind of herpes like you don't know it's disgusting let's say you you're listening to my first few points and you're just like oh my goodness like i've been there before i did not know the things oh my goodness and nothing happened to you fine praise the lord okay but if you're paying your good hard-earned money you need to know these things and look out for them next is just not using disposables if they've taken off the felt tip to make sure that they don't accidentally put it on your lip whatever right but you still need a disposable so there are disposable wands that have a felt tip not like this one in per se but they have a felt tip to it and other kinds that's the kind of disposable that they'll put inside the lip stain inside the lip gloss they'll dip it inside of maybe a lip gloss palette or something like that that they can then throw away so that they can prevent themselves from double dipping so when the makeup artist is set up and you sit down keep your eyes open girl i'm not saying harass her i don't like to be harassed okay as a freelancer i was harassed a few times mm, nobody wants that but you do want to be educated and know what's going on like oh you have disposables i love that thank you great mm. you want to be mindful of what's going on or if they don't have disposables be careful and pay attention to what's going on. So they don't use any lip stains. They just use a palette of lipsticks. Well, then you're gonna need to have something like this silver tool right here. It's just like a spatula, whatever. So then let's say they have any kind of palette of things, right? It's easier to transport that way. That's just like the thing to do. Great, they need a tool like this. I'm sure they'll have it. They should have it, right? And then you, what you do is spray this with alcohol, wipe it off on a paper towel, take it into your palette of whatever it is, take some of the product off of the palette, it, put it onto your glass or your your clean you've cleaned this already if not they want to clean it in front of you to help you feel comfortable that they're practicing sanitary habits put it onto your palette then you take your brush I don't care how clean your brush is then they take their brush they should take their brush and then put it onto the palette to get the product what be it a foundation be it a lippy be it a concealer whatever it is then they take it and then apply it to your face that is what they should be doing if they're not doing that girl you have questions if they're going into their palette of concealer into their palette of foundation into their lippy palette or whatever it is contour palette and they're taking the brush into the palette and then putting it onto your face you got a problem that is not sanitary that is double dipping that's disgusting because they did the same thing with the other client and then they put it onto their face and went back in and put it onto their face then they're coming to you clean brush or not it doesn't matter it's like you sharing french fries and there's one container of ketchup so your friend dipped into it dipped into it again and she's eating her french fries enjoying it amazingness oh can i have one yeah girl go ahead and have some you get a french fry you dip into her ketchup what you got now you got now whatever's in her mouth okay so when you go to someone that's double dipping their foundation palettes and their lip palettes and their concealer palettes and so forth you got now whatever that person before them had and then before them and then before them and before, and before them and you know bacteria multiplies it's a problem when it comes to eyeshadow palettes of course you're gonna double dip on those right but the key is again you need a spray bottle this is like 50 cent at walmart okay these travel to go sprayer tip Fig, what finger what's it called i used to have these in my kit and i even use it now for myself and i'll spray something down this is a little empty but whatever you put your 99 percent alcohol in here you spray it down boom boom spray it down get a little tissue paper towel wipe it clean now bacteria free okay the same applies for your eyeshadow the key is to make sure that they spray the palette with alcohol now she may have done this before you came that's fine but the key is to just make sure that she gives it a little spritz and let it air dry don't close it to trap in the bacteria she should let it air dry maybe she did this before you came but i used to like to do it just to make sure that the client is watching me practice safe habits it's really important for makeup artists in my opinion and just it's one thing to be clean but you want to also practice it in front of your client so that they can trust that you're clean you may have washed your hands before they came but you should wash it when they come you may have put on hand sanitizer but you should put it on when they're right in front of you. You want them to feel comfortable that, okay, she ain't putting her dirty fingers or her dirty hands all on my face. And not to mention dirty hands, if they have dirty nails, that's a problem too. Like you wouldn't want to go to a dermatologist or an esthetician and her nails are gross. Like just filthy. Like they're, they're next to your face. When it comes to foundation, things that are cream product, you don't really need to be spraying them. That person just needs to make sure that they are not double dipping. So they should take enough. When they use that spatula, they should take enough. And let's say when I would take the foundation out of my palette, I didn't have enough. Fine. Spray this again, you know, wipe it off 
and then put it back into your foundation palette or concealer palette or contour palette and just get some more. It's a lot of spraying, a lot of wiping. You know, makeup artists, if you're doing it right, you're gonna you're gonna use a lot of tissue. That's fine. You need to practice cleanliness. It's so so important. Again, it's you as a consumer. You need to know these things and beware. Open your eyes, and when you start seeing stuff go a little left, either you have questions or you gonna walk away. I'm very sorry. I just hope that you find you find yourself in the chair of someone that is making good sanitary choices. Otherwise, you need no. You need to say something when they're applying your lashes, honey. They do not need to be blowing on your lashes. So she puts her glue on the glue on your lashes, right? And I used to have to go like this. You cannot be caught dead blowing on someone's lashes okay this person should be practicing like not even breathing too much on you either because that's just that's that's like disruptive and annoying right you can be all like breathing heavily on a client it's just gross so when they put the glue on your lashes if they start doing like this after you throw up walk away and they shouldn't be all like and one other thing, and I'm, and I'm sure that there's more that I just can't think about. I mean, obviously brushes should be clean. How you know that they're clean? They don't look brown or they don't look like they have any product on them. You just hope that they really clean their brushes. Like, I don't know what else to say about that. But when it comes to your color matching, okay? Like, can they color match you? Because the color matching is, I think, the mo like the main thing. Like, yes, can they do your brows right? Can they do your eyeshadow blending correctly? Like, does your face look nice? Like, okay, yes, we get all that, right? But can they match your color correctly? That is like the question of the century, right? A true makeup artist should be able to match anybody. Now, with that said, I know I've had my fair share of not matching correctly. And it just is a thing as you're growing and learning and getting better, you know, like it's a little bit. So I say this at the end, like as like a kind of a funny thing. It's not funny, but like if, cause if it's your wedding day, like, come on, it's not funny. Like this is not, it's not a joke. You see what I'm saying? But of course with, with brides, you would have had a consultation to really make sure that this is the right color. You feel what I'm saying? And honestly, a cheat is to be like, listen, go to your, go to the counter and then go to whatever counter you prefer and let them color match you and then get a sample. Okay, bring that for your consultation. And if I think it looks great, I'll make sure I had the color for you on the day. Like, I don't know what to say, you know, I don't know what else to tell you. I don't know what else to tell you. I don't know what else to I don't know what else to tell you. Okay. Color matching, blending, all of that. If it all ain't looking right, then the person you're going to is not trained well. And even if they're self-taught, there are a lot of people who are self-taught makeup artists who are killing it. Like for me, I was self-taught. No one taught me a thing. While I was at Mac, I just watched and learned from other people. No one sat down and taught me. I never had a training. They never took freelancers to training. If they do it now, that's great. But I never went to a Mac update, okay? So I was self-taught but I did make mistakes. You just want to make sure you land in someone's chair that knows what intarnation they are doing. And that's about color matching, blending, all of the above, okay? Highlight choice, contour choice, eyelash placement, honey. <sighs> Basically, do your research before you hire someone to make sure that you're going to the right person, ask questions, you know, obviously, hopefully you would have seen the person's work before you sat down with them. But as far as the sanitary stuff, yeah, if you were to ask someone about their practices and they can confirm these things, then great. If I left anything out, comment below and share. Have you had any horror stories, any good stories? Have you noticed anything that you have a question about? Just comment below and let's talk about it. Share the video with your friends, give it a thumbs up and make sure you subscribe. I'm so glad. And make sure you subscribe. Glad that you're here and I'll see you later.